Hello Internet. I want to take some time today to talk to you about the environment. More than ever, people are starting to think about their environmental impact and trying to make a positive one. And for pretty good reason. Here in Minnesota, we've had increasingly bizarre weather the last couple of years. This past winter was one of our snowiest ever on record, just snowstorm after snowstorm, followed by a lot of flooding this spring. And then this summer, it's turned to drought. Look at my lawn. It's terrible. Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes, and this spring we had 10,000 flooded lakes, and now this summer we have 10,000 mud holes. So, what are some things that we can maybe do that would help to improve things in the environment? One of those is our form of transportation, whether that's using mass transit or uh, combining our trips or commuting um, with other people in a carpool or something. But what if there was an even greener option? I've noticed a lot of people have started to purchase e-bikes recently and some of them are using those for commuting. But what if there was something that was an even better option? Say something that worked in all weathers and that was so efficient that it didn't even need electric assist. Well, I have a suggestion. Introducing the Velomobile. So what in the world is this thing you're probably thinking? It looks like crazy space age type stuff, right? Well, it's actually a recumbent trike with a really aerodynamically efficient uh, shell. There's a wheel here in the back and then there are wheels on either side in the front. So just the same setup as a trike and inside you have this very very comfortable reclined seat just like a recumbent trike would have. Unlike a bicycle seat you've got the pressure point spread out all across your back You've got a nice leisurely reclined position. You've got a tiller up front for steering. You just twist it left and right. Conveniently placed brake lever. In addition, it has a full lighting system. It has a super bright flasher and an option for the front and rear lights to be either solid or flashing mode. Giving excellent visibility. It has blinkers. It has a horn. <laughs> and it's basically equipped like a car. But it's not because there's no electric assist. The shell acts as a frame. It's called a monocoque so that you don't need to have any sort of heavy sort of reinforcement parts. It's just strategically laid up carbon fiber with thickness only in the places where it's needed. And in fact, Velomobiles can weigh as little as 48 pounds. This one weighs 54 pounds, but I have another one that's even lighter that's at uh, about 49 pounds. It has a full suspension system, so it's super comfortable and absorbs the road bumps and it's incredibly efficient. It's so efficient, in fact, that an average rider can, capable of putting out 160 to 180 watts can ride at 30 miles an hour on the flat road. In fact, most riders can average around 20 miles per hour on typical terrain. Because it's so efficient, it also makes it a lot easier to ride longer distances because it doesn't take so long and you're going a lot faster and it requires so much less energy. With the bulk and other velomobiles that I've ridden, a 50 mile ride feels more like, oh, well, maybe a 30 mile ride in a standard bicycle. Now you might be thinking, well, my e-bike can do all of those things. And you're probably right, your e-bike probably is very efficient and you probably don't have to pedal all that hard. 
In fact, velomobiles are so aerodynamically efficient that they actually can cruise at higher speeds than a lot of countries have electric assist limits. For instance, in Europe, where the limit is 25 kilometers per hour. But what about when the weather gets nasty? What if it's pouring down rain? Do you really want to ride your e-bike outside covered in hot, sticky rain gear? No. What about if it's below zero Fahrenheit, which is about minus 18 Celsius? How much fun is it to go out riding your e-bike when it's like that? Well, here in my Velomobile, I am well equipped for the rain, especially if I'm riding with the race hood, which I have on right now. In fact, I have even a windshield wiper to keep my visor nice and clear. And in here, there are actually uh, ducts to take the rain and pull it away so that it doesn't come inside the cabin. In the winter, it's usually 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. Another great thing about Velomobiles is the visibility. And you might be thinking, well, it's quite low to the ground. Well, yes, that's true. However, it's about the size of a refrigerator and usually Velomobiles are quite brightly colored. Based on the number of people that I have following me with their phones out taking video, I would have to say that Velomobiles are pretty visible. In fact, I made a video talking about visibility and things that are low to the ground, and you can check that video in the link up here above. One of the biggest maintenance points with a bicycle is the drivetrain. It tends to get dirty pretty quick because of its proximity to the ground. However, in a Velomobile, the drivetrain is all inside. which means that since it's fully enclosed, it's not going to get anywhere near as dirty as a bicycle. In fact, the drivetrain in a Velomobile usually lasts five to 10 times longer than a bicycle. Since there's no electric assist, everything on a Velomobile is just as easy to maintain as it would on a bicycle. There's convenient access hatches front and rear that get you to the drivetrain parts which is really the only thing you ever have to do any maintenance on. Not having to worry about e-assist means not having to worry about your battery capacity. You can go as long as you can stuff calories in your face. You also don't have to worry about complex electronics that could need repair when you're in the middle of nowhere, or they could just plain become obsolete. You also have the advantage of easy change of flat tires because all three wheels are fully accessible from one side and don't need to be removed in order to fix a flat. Velomobiles such as this bulk have a lot of really important safety features designed in such as this hotspot light module which puts the lights up at about three feet off the ground where it's easier for drivers to see. The carbon fiber shell has a layer of Inegra in between the carbon fiber layers that prevents the carbon fiber from splintering in the event of a crash. This front support helps to prevent the front end from shifting back towards the rider. These shoulder pads help to keep the driver from flying forward into the front of the manhole opening. This pad for the head helps to prevent whiplash. Behind the seat are these series of pads that help to cushion the impact from the rear and prevent it from transferring to the rider's neck. The seat also distributes the forces over the entire surface instead of one point. In the event of a rollover, the head bump behind the rider and the hot spot act as a roll cage. Because of the shape of the vehicle, it's very stable in crosswinds, which is also an important safety feature that you won't find in most bicycles. Furthermore, most carbon fiber damage can be fairly easily repaired. While you might not fit quite as much in a Velomobile as you could in a cargo bike, you certainly can fit quite a lot of groceries in. In fact, this grocery haul here, I probably could have taken more stuff. 
I can also take a trumpet in my briefcase, although not at the same time as the groceries. And they have the option to also haul a trailer if I really need to haul some big stuff. Cycling substantially decreases noise pollution. It also increases demand for traffic-free green spaces. What better way to maintain nature like here in the Allgäu of Germany? The carbon footprint from the use and manufacture of a car is 280 grams per mile. For a bicycle, 33 grams per mile. That's about a tenth. And that includes the manufacture of the carbon fiber bicycle and the food that we need as a fuel. 430 miles of riding is sufficient to offset the carbon production levels according to the Trek Bicycle Sustainability Report. The Velo uses obviously more carbon fiber, but it's done in a much more low waste hand layup than the carbon fiber vacuum packing that's done in the large factories. So what does this pretty neat form of transportation cost? Well, a used Velomobile in pretty good condition runs somewhere between $4,000 and $8,000. A new Velomobile, which are generally custom built to your specifications at places like the Velomobile World Factory in Romania, start at around $8,200 plus options and shipping. Now I know that sounds like a tremendous amount of money, but consider what it's potentially replacing. An electric car starts at $26,000. A Velomobile in comparison is about a third of that price. Over the lifetime of the vehicle, you're also saving the cost to charge the car, the cost of gasoline if you choose a traditional car, you have no insurance costs, and the maintenance cost of a bicycle is a fraction of that as a car, especially with an enclosed drivetrain. You also don't have the cost of replacing an e-bike or electric car batteries when those batteries wear out, and you don't have the environmental impact of trying to recycle those batteries either. In addition, since you're getting more exercise and fresh air, it's likely your healthcare costs are also going to reduce and your health is going to improve. That alone can be a massive savings. So, if you'd like to learn more about Velomobiles, maybe book a test ride or even place an order for one, click the link in the description to get started investing in a better future for you and for the environment.